When we think of fire and damage, we often think about the physical damage that's occurred to the plants and the animals in the areas that it's burnt. What we don't often understand fully is the damage that can be done to the topsoil as it basically cooks. And that topsoil could be full of carbon, which is a very important element to healthy plant growth. Now, so many plants in Australia have evolved without needing too much of it. But what do you do when extreme weather events wash that away? Dr Joe Fontaine, lecturer in environmental sciences at Murdoch University, is studying the effects of a rapidly changing environment, and more specifically, the impacts of bushfire and fire ecology. Now, I'm looking around here and I can see the devastation on the plants, but what about the impact on animals? You know, the, the numbers that have been quoted out of the East Coast fires are horrendous. A billion native animals killed in the fires. What's the short-term and long-term impact? One of the biggest issues here is that historically, you always would have had some fire like this. Mm -hmm. However, it's the extent. And so in the southeast you know, of, of Australia and Kangaroo Island, that's the poster child where so much of the landscape burn that you really wonder, like, is there enough left to recolonize or how long will that take for that to come back? Yeah. And in a place like this, you, know, you can see how the leaves are burnt and the structures changed. And so some animals are okay, but many who would prefer you know, more green, lush vegetation are not gonna be able to use this. And that becomes an issue when it's the scale of the fires. So yeah. when a big percent of the landscape's burnt and it becomes then a problem because there's just not enough other places for these animals to go. So, they, you know, we hear these carnivores, cockatoos circling around us, and they need mature vegetation that's producing seeds that they can eat. It's a question of how many more years will it be before those plants are again mature to be a food source. And, yeah. and then what's that balance in the landscape? One of my main research areas is trying to understand this idea of fire frequency combined with climate change and the impacts on the vegetation and what they can sustain. And I can tell you our research definitely shows that if you start really cranking down that time between fires so it gets very short, yeah. there are negative consequences. The concern is long term, if we have consistent fires, we may end up losing some of the plants that we love the most. <laughs>